All right, welcome back to the channel. Errol Spence Jr. gets the shaft by the WBO, who once again tries to block him from a championship fight. And the only reason that I can think they could be doing it is the continuing the continual problem that the WBO has with the with the PBC. They are obviously trying to keep the bat belt away from Al Heyman and the PBC and doing anything that they can do to try to make that happen. But they'll probably still fail. Let's talk about that in this video. In some ways, sanctioning bodies, the WBA, the WBC, the IBF, and the WBO are very, very powerful organizations. And, and as far as they are the ones that control the championship belts. However, at the same time, these same sanctioning bodies have absolutely no power when it comes to the promoters and the big money flying around because. That's how they stay in business. As a result, you see things like you see going on with Errol Spence Jr., Sebastian Fundora, and as they prepare for what should be a unification fight between the two for the belts held by Sebastian Fundora. However, the WBO seems dead set on getting that belt away from Sebastian Fundora and to anybody other than somebody with the PBC. And they even go so far as, as claiming that they will strip Sebastian Fundora for fighting Errol Spence if certain things are not met, even though Terrence Crawford is not going to be fighting Sebastian Fundora. Now, before I get into the details, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you're a longtime subscriber and a supporter of the channel, thank you guys so much. But let's get into this because this is something that has um, been very, very annoying for me the entire time I've watched the sport of boxing. I think it's one of the more confusing things out there about the sport of boxing for people that come in and just want to see a fight. And it is the sanctioning bodies. So when Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr.'s fight ended and Errol Terrence moved up to 154 pounds, the WBO belt was held by Tim Zhu. When Tim Zhu was going to fight. I can't remember. Oh, well, first of all, they tried to strip Jermel of the of, of it for Tim Zhu. They did strip Jermel of that WBO belt as soon as he won it. So they and then they and then Tim Zhu fought for it. Tim Zhu lost in Sebastian Fundora. But even when Tim Zhu won, they had ordered before Tim Zhu won, they had ordered him to fight Terrence Crawford as the WBO super champion. Now, me, what I said was. I know he's going to fight Errol Spence because number one, Errol got in the ring with uh, was already said that he was going to get in the ring with the winner of those uh, of of the Tim Zoo uh, and the Sebastian Vendor fight. Now, I don't know whether or not if if uh, that Errol would have always went the WBC route or if he would have went the there was a potential from the W to go the WBO route. But I don't think there there is. I just think the WBO route came into play when the unification fight took place, but they were going to eventually get that belt away from Tim Zoo too by forcing Tim Zoo to do something that the PBC doesn't want to do. So in this particular purse bid uh, that took place for the for the Terrence Crawford versus Sebastian Fandora fight that would have been at one uh, would have been for that belt. Well, Terrence Crawford decided that he wasn't going to do it. So once he decided that he wasn't going to do it, you think that the WBO would let it go. You think that the WBO would be like, OK, well, all right, that guy pulled out. That will satisfy this WBO thing that you're asking for, because I don't even think that there's a mandatory there. Right. I don't think that there's a mandatory do for the for the for the for the WBO for some match from Andorra. That is the only reason that they ordered the fight was because Terrence Crawford was the super champion. So once Terrence Crawford was not going to be involved anymore, 
they shouldn't have a problem with who Tim Zoo, who with who, with who um Sebastian Maduro fights. But strangely enough, they do. And they put out this edict that says, well, we're not going to allow you to fight Errol Spence unless Errol Spence gets ranked and Errol Spence and he's an active fighter. Man, if you guys don't stop, there is no way in the world. And I'm telling you right now that if Manny Pacquiao wanted to come out of retirement and fight a WBO champion, if he wanted to fight Brian Norman for the welterweight championship of the world at 147, I promise you that the WBO would not have any problem with it whatsoever. They would immediately put Manny Pacquiao and and Brian uh, and Brian Norman in the ring together. Why? Because whatever Bob orders is whatever they do. So the idea that you guys are going to that they're oh, we don't really know if Errol Spence Jr. should be qualified to fight for our belt. That's why Fox, who is no longer doing boxing, said they didn't want to deal with said that they weren't even going to recognize the WBO, the, not the PBC, but Fox, but Fox said that they would not recognize the WBO because the WBO was playing so many games. Now, if you have to, I'm going to give you my opinion. There's no worse sanction embodied than the WBO. Some people say it's the WBC, but no, the most blatantly favored, the, the organization that plays the most blatant favoritism for promoters, specific promoters for their belts is the WBO, who is almost always doing things to favor Bob Arum and Frank and Frank Warren over there in the in the in the UK. And it has always been like that with sanctioned bodies because Don King had a great relationship with um, Herbert, uh, Alberto uh, Suleiman and they always did well. His fighters always had WBC championships and WBA championships. They tried to split it up by bringing in the dub, the IBF in the early eighties and, um, and, and the W and the WBO. So, I mean, it's just real. How can I say, um, a bunch of nonsense, man. And so don't be surprised if people talk about fights, big fights and great fights not being made. When you got the sanctioned bodies themselves playing these little manipulation games, trying to trying to keep their belts away from certain organizations by any mechanism that they can think of. The idea that that Errol Spence Jr. shouldn't be qualified to fight for the WBO belt is ridiculous. He's a five year reigning three belt holder at 147 and he only has one loss in his career. Now, if you're telling, well, he's got to come back and take a tune-up. Hold on, man. Terrence Crawford didn't fight that long ago. Terrence Crawford took a year off and moved up in weight off of a win. You did not have any problem with that. But you got a problem with, with, with Errol taking a little bit longer off to get in, you know, to get his fight on the schedule since there's so many fights in the second half of the year? Then give me a break. You guys just don't, the WBO just doesn't want the guy that doesn't, just doesn't want the PBC to have the belt. And at a certain point in time, I'm telling you, man, these sanctioned bodies are terrible. But it's not all on them because, again, they deal with the pressure from the promoters and the fighters that actually pay their bill. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you right now, Ter- Errol Smith Jr. is going to be fighting Sebastian Pandora, period. Because they don't, because the because the audience in the AT&T Stadium is not going to see that little ass WBO belt. It's barely going to see it. Don't worry. The WBC will give them two belts to put on Sebastian Pandora. Uh, and they'll call it a Dallas, Texas, Errol Spence belt. So just so he can be up there with the picture showing it, man, I'm telling you, do not like the WBO have never liked the WBO. I've seen this move the entire way. Terrence Crawford never had any real intention on fighting some bash and Medora. They just want to hold the show up and hope and see, okay, well, if it, Terrence doesn't fight, let's figure out how we can hold, hurry up and get this over to Bob Aram. Does Bob have a fighter that'll go to 154, like Teixeira or, or somebody like that, or Kodo or somebody like that? <laughs> Saddam Ali. You know, one of those guys that had that WBO 154-pound belt. <laughs> anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces. Deuces.